and we are also to, um, care for each other because we are here as a family gathered together. So we should, you know, look out for each other. Ensure that you're, you, you, you're safe and ensure that your brothers and sisters as well is safe. Amen? Right, so let us bear that in mind as we go not only today at church, but even during the course of the week, at home, when you go on your friends, when you're at work, please maintain social distancing, the sanitizing, overall, the protocols of the COVID-19. Amen? I'm going to invite you all to stand and turn your Bibles with me to Hebrews chapter 4. We're going to begin alternately from verse 1 to, to verse 16. That's Hebrews chapter 4, from verse 1 to, to verse 16. You all found it, you can say amen. So a lot of persons still don't find it as yet. It's the book of Hebrews 4, from 1 to, to verse 16. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. Can I begin? Uh, to begin the word of the Lord. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear, lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For we who have believed do enter that rest, as he has said. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. And again, in this place, they shall not enter my rest. Again, he designates a certain day, saying in David, Today, after such a long time as it has been said, Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Therefore, there remains, therefore, a rest for the people of God. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. And there is no creature hidden from his sight but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. For we do not have a high priest who cannot, be, who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. 16 alas. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Here in the portion of God's holy world, beyond it by saying, Amen. You may all be seated for a short while. So, these few months, weeks, days, hours, seconds, minutes, you know, I've been always thinking about the grace of God. Amen? 
and the grace of God is extended to us through his son Jesus Christ when he sent him to die for our sins and he rose him from the dead that we may have free access individually to Almighty God through Jesus Christ and I've been focusing on the word grace and what that word means and when I did my research it said it's the unmerited favor of God and what does it mean by when it says the unmerited favor of God it is an, an undeserved grace so God with his unconditional love that he has for us knowing how sinful of a human beings we are he looked beyond our faults look beyond our sins and he see the need for, for, for us to be in our in a closer relationship with him so he just sent his son Jesus Christ to die so that we can have a second chance a second chance I will say through Jesus Christ right because the way to God is through who? Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ was sent to us as it says in John 3 verse 16 that for God so loved the world that for God so have an unconditional love for this sinful world he gave his only begotten son and that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life we who are here who are gathered here today we have accepted Jesus Christ some of us has and some of us still haven't but we have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior for our life so we are living in that grace of Almighty God amen so as I said I have been focusing on this grace because I've been experiencing a lot of things in my life that I don't deserve it I don't know about you but God nonetheless being who he is still extend his unmerited favor knowing that I do not deserve the, the, the benefits or the rewards that he has in store for us or for me right so this song that I've been singing from then until now your grace and mercy we're going to be singing that song today and reflecting on our lives and how it has been then how it is now and how we want it to be with Christ amen so we're gonna all stand and we're gonna personalize this song from the heart singing of the grace and mercy of Almighty God Your grace and mercy brought me through. I'm living this moment because of you.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us all go to the Lord in prayer. be seated. So I'd like to also extend that this time things to our viewers on Facebook Live and also by YouTube which I think is posted after the service, right Rev? Yeah. So I want to greet you all, both locally and internationally. And I want to also extend a special shout out to Brother Horace, Henry and Joel. I know Brother Horace always have a bright smile, but after September 3rd, I guess that smile is very, very brighter. Because his... <laughs> because his party has retained power. Amen? Right. So, we just want to give God thanks for all that is happening, right? And it's not by chance why this happened, but it just happened. Because we know that promotion don't come from the north, the south, not the east, not the west. It comes from above. Amen? Amen? So anything that used to happen, it doesn't happen by chance. God has something to do with it. He's always in control. Because remember that he's the omnipotent God. The all-powerful God, the almighty God. Amen? So we just give him thanks for whatever he's doing in our lives, right? So the scripture that we read this morning in Hebrews chapter 4, 4 verse 6, 16 says that, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, let that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We serve a God who, when we are going through situations in our life, we're not to take it negatively. I to even say question asking him why God why am I going through this situation in my life God is a God who when he, he breaks you he does so with grace he's a God when he leads you to a certain situation and allows certain things to happen to you in your life he's in control he does so with grace amen yes. I can speak of it because I am a living testimony of the grace of almighty God I have been broken and now I am experiencing the, 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 the what did God did to Job in the end? Say again, what's the word? 
It double, but I look, it starts with the R. Right. He restores us. Amen. So no matter what the situation is, what you're going through right now, just continue to keep the faith and keep on trusting in God because he is going to restore you. And when he restores you, he's not going to keep you at the level that where you were before. He's going to take it to a higher level. Amen? Yes, because as I said, that I am a living testimony of the grace of Almighty God. And I can just share it at this moment. You know, you all know that I work as a security officer in Guardsman. And I was a supervisor then, and I was happily married, and, you know, living life, and life was just going so sweet. And in seven months after marriage, God allowed my wife to pass away. And that was one of the most terriblest things could ever happen to someone. Me, personally. I took it very seriously. I lost a lot of weight, yes. And I wanted was to question God, but I always, he always bring back thoughts to the book of Job and how Job went through his um, situation where he lost his ten children and his wife and his wealth and everything and how Job kept the faith he refused to curse God even though his wife told him to curse God and die he refused to do so as he know the God whom he served so God is always bringing those passages to memory that is why it's good brothers and sisters to read the word of God because you're going to find yourself in some situations where trust if you have the word of God in you, rooted in you, you will falter to the situation. There be some backslide and started cursing God, asking God questions, why? Why are you talking to me about yet? You understand what I'm saying? But the word of God keeps you and teaches you not to do that. Don't question his authority. Right? Because when God says yes, it is yes. When he says no, it is no. It's for us to just say, the Lord give it and the Lord take it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So, I have gone through that. And I find myself in a stage coming down to, leading down to August, where I was in a financial situation. I was financially embarrassed. My bills, all that my pay could have paid, could have taken care of. And then I have to be depending on depend my mom and my sister for support. Can you imagine big, big man like me still depend on their mother and sister for support? Hmm? But that was the case. Right? But now, I've seen where the reward of God is now taking precedence in my life. Because I was recently promoted to a position of a location security manager at Hyatt Hotel in Montego Bay. <laughs> God be the glory. And trust me, thank you very much. And I want to run, I want to jump, I want to scream, but me just humble myself. Yeah, me just humble myself because I say, I'm, I'm just seeing it and I say, boy, God, this is you. I'm not saying this must be you. I'm saying that this is you because I have kept the faith. Even though at times the mind, can, you know, the, the flesh at times, you know. But nonetheless, I have kept the faith. I keep on trusting in God. I keep on putting everything before him. And trust me, all oh, he's coming through for me right now is just words really can't explain. Me have to just continue to let my life be a testimony of how thankful I am for this. So, brothers and sisters, I encourage you. I don't know what you have been going through or what you are going through right now. But continue to keep the faith. God never fail. He cannot fail. He doesn't know what it is to fail. Anything he says he will do, he will do it. His promises are true. So you can keep him at his words. Continue to believe in him and he will come through for you. I have a particular brother, Brother Joel. Every time he keeps on bothering me, but telling a bird to fly. I said, Brother Joel, I'm still waiting on the Lord. I waited so long before I got married. I can't wait again, no? Amen. 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 I don't say it. Amen. Like when I agree with Joel too. Oh, 
because, you know, I, I'm reminded of the scripture that they that wait upon the Lord shall what? Right, so I, I'm, I'm a Bible believing person. It makes sense if not the word, I feel contrary to the word. I have to continue doing what God said, which is believing in Him and His. Amen? So I encourage you, brothers and sisters, to believe in Almighty God for Him to come through for you. No matter what the situation or the circumstance may be, He's always there for us. He tells us that He's never going to leave us nor forsake us. You know the story of the one set of footstep in the footstep in the sand, right? When the person was noticing that only one step all along, he said, Two and now one, Massy. And Christ let him know that all the time that you're seeing that one pair of footprints, it was Christ carrying you, yes. right? So he's carrying us through our situation. So let us just be humble and trust him and take him at his words, amen. amen? Right? So we're going to get ready now to worship the Lord in our. Giving, which are tithes and offering time. And I'm going to ask the praise people to do a wonderful song for us as this is done. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Brothers and sisters, as we uh, start a new church year today, the first Sunday in, 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 in uh, September, I, I did indicate, I did indicate. Uh, a few Sundays ago that we are going to be going back to our first fruits Sunday, right? And so that is today. So I'm going to ask you to uh, get that special offering and, and um, we're going to start sowing our special seeds in our first fruit basket. So I'm going that basket. Uh, and our benevolence, our benevolence box is still going to be in the forefront. So we are going to actually sow into benevolence as well. So for the first fruit, come, come Sister Uni, Sister Mackenzie. Bring, bring the box. towards the building into that green basket Amen. and give as the Lord blesses you, you give accordingly. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. my shepherd he goes before me he goes before me defender behind me defender behind me No weapon can harm me. So I won't fear. I won't fear. Sing hallelujah.
Thank you, Lord, for being our shepherd. Thank you, Lord, for taking us through mountains and valleys. Thank you, Lord, for revealing yourself to us so that we can see you face to face. Thank you for such relationship. Lord, we do honor you and praise you today. It is all that we can do. And we pray that it will rise to your throne as a sweet smelling incense that you will be pleased with our worship and pleased with our praise. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to worship in giving of the various gifts, our tithes, our offerings, Lord, our gifts to benevolence and our gifts, Lord, to our building fund. Lord God, we thank you that even though things are not the way we want them to be, and even though we are surrounded by such circumstances as exist today, Lord, we still thank you for blessing us. Through it all, we have learned to trust in Jesus. We have learned to trust in you, O oh God. And we thank you for never forgetting us. Thank you, God, for all that you have done and for all that you're about to do. We pronounce your blessings upon your people as we bless our gifts and sacrifices today and tell you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jackson want, want us to know that CXC class is still starting on, sep on the 14th of September upstairs. Registration forms are available so you can check with Brother Jackson for your registration forms. And for persons who are cautious and cannot make it to classes here due to the whole COVID-19 thingy, it will be also online um, classes, right? Yeah, he's also, he's also providing online classes. So you can speak with him after church. Amen? Right, so now we have um, the praise team coming to do praise and worship. Amen. Come on, somebody praise the Lord. Somebody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you happy to be in God's house today? Are you happy to be in God's house today? Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, I was looking at the Sunday school lesson and when, 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 I, when I read, you know, about the creation story, I think it's one of the most um, well-known story, you know, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, whatever, 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 right? And when I, when I read through and, uh, you know, it, it, it dawned on me that we serve a great, a big, wonderful God. Amen. Our God is big. He is big. He is a humongous. I think one psalmist said that he is terrible. He is mighty. Right? And then a scripture came back to me and as Brother, brother um, Taylor, right, you know, was talking as pastor would say, Brother Taylor was in the spirit because it's the same scripture that I had um, you know, from, from yesterday um, in, 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 on my mind to share. It is Job 38. Job 38. And it says, Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee and answer thou me. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. Who had laid the measures thereof? If thou knowest, or who has stretched the line upon it? God was asking Job, where were you 
when I was laying the foundation of the where were you when I was creating where were you when I was speaking let there be and there was as a matter of fact from the Sunday school lesson something else spoke to me that the sun and the moon were not created until the fourth day and and God had said let there be light it shows that God's light God's glory is so big that it it illuminates this the stratosphere it illuminates the, the whole galaxy because there was no sun, there was no moon, glory of God that caused light to be upon the earth. And so we serve a great and a big and a wonderful God. Today we're going to celebrate. I feel celebratory. Uh, uh, if I should give this morning's praise and worship a title, I would say creation. Because we're going to celebrate the God of creation. Hallelujah. The Jehovah God, Yahweh, we're going to worship him. Yes. This song come to me, what a mighty God we serve. I know I sing it a lot, but it, it, it is still true, right? It is still true because what? Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth have to adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Let's go, let's go. Come on, put your hands together.
don't know who come in here with any burdens but, but burdens are going to be lifted today because we serve a great and a big and a wonderful God burdens are welcome here burdens are welcome here we lift burdens in here for the spirit of the Lord is in the place hallelujah. somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah we're going to try this song we are, I think we have only done it once before but we're going to try it and you're going to help us sing the song we're going to make a declaration in the house so the song says Lord you're mighty so when I say Lord you're mighty you're going to repeat alright you get what I'm saying so if I say Lord you're mighty Lord you're mighty Lord you're mighty Lord you're mighty alright alright you're getting it you're getting it so watch this I don't know what you're going through but sometimes we have to make some declaration and declare that God is mighty. Yes, yes. We know that the devil is strong, but who is stronger? God is stronger. Yes. And even if the devil is mighty, God is what? Mightier. And so we give God praise in the house. Come on. Are we ready? Come on. Say, Lord, you're mighty. 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 Lord, your mind, 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 Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Listen, listen. Oh, Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. You said. You said your glory above the heavens and the earth. When I think, when I think, say. When I The moon. The sun, the moon and the stars. No praise is high enough. No praise. No praise is high enough to express how great you are. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, mighty God we serve. Lord, you're mighty. 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 Take it out, take it out. You see, the moment we realize that God is mighty, then our problems become strangely dim. Can you see what the devil wants us to do? You know, the devil wants us to focus on our problems. Whenever you try to make your focus on your problems, just remind the devil, just in case he forget. Just remind him that you serve a mighty God. Heaven and earth bow before the mighty God that we serve. 
So it doesn't matter what problems come. We can declare and say, Lord, you're mighty. 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 Somebody give God a praise in the house. My God, how great you are. You are so big that we can't even describe you. You are so big that the human vocabulary is inadequate to express how great you are. That is the reason why sometimes we got to go in the, the prior language. We got to go in the heavenly language and speak another language because the human tongue cannot describe the human tongue cannot express the human tongue cannot explain how great God is my God my God my God just in case somebody forgets today we are going to tell you that God is indescribable he is immeasurable my God, hallelujah. Somebody just raise a hand, raise a hand to heaven. Say, God, I don't know how to praise you. Because word, words are not enough to praise you. But, but, but I will try. Yes, I will try. I'll try to praise you, God. I will try to worship you. Even though, God, I know you deserve so much more. You deserve so much more than what we have to give. But Lord God, we, we can't describe you. Oh God, you're so big that we can't describe you. Hallelujah. We're, trying to, we're going to try to do this one. From the highest of highs to the depths of the sea. Your majesty from, from the colors of fall to, to the fragrance of spring. Every creature, every creature unique, unique in the song that it sings. Yes, all exclaiming. say all powerful untamable all struck we pause to, to our, our knees as, as we humbly proclaim you are amazing God. God. let's do the first verse again from the highest of heights to the depths of the Yes, creation, creation, yes. Creation revealing your, your majesty. majesty. Yes. From the colors of fall. From the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring. Every creature unique in the song that it sings. Every creature unique in the song that it sings. All exclaiming, indescribable, uncontainable, you place the stars in the sky, and you know them by name. You are amazing. You are amazing, God. Oh, powerful, all powerful, untamable, all struck with. Fall to our 
you know them you know by, by name. name. You are amazing, God. You are amazing, God. Yes, yes. All powerful. All powerful. You're untamable. Untamable. All strength. All strength. We fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim. You are amazing, God. You are amazing, God. You are amazing, God. Come on, somebody, just lift your hands and tell God how amazing He is. Come on, just lift up your hand and tell God how amazing He is. Yes, you are amazing, God. Yes, you are amazing, God. You are amazing, God. You are amazing, God. You are amazing, God. Yes, you are amazing, God. Yes, you are so good to us, God. You are amazing, God. Yes, God, you are amazing, God. Yes, God, you are amazing, God. Hallelujah. You never cease to amaze me, God. You never cease to amaze me, God. You are bigger than our problems, God. You know the end from the beginning, God. Oh, God, you can empathize. You can sympathize with us, God. Oh, God, for we don't serve a God that cannot be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. And so, God, we declare that you are indeed amazing, God. You are indeed amazing, God. God, if you take care of the sparrows, God. Oh, God, if you take care of the lilies, God. If you take care of the dogs. If you take care of the chakras, God. If you take care of the birds of the air. Oh, God, much more us, God, who you have made to lower than the angels oh almighty God you are you're amazing God you're amazing God you are amazing God sometimes when I look at where God has brought me from when I look at where God has brought me from I have to just lift up my hands and say you are amazing God you are amazing. You are incredible. My God. My God. My God. My God. You. You are amazing, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How great is our God. But say, how great is our God? How great yes, yes, yes. is our God? Let's get into worship. Sing with me. How great is our God? And all will see how great, how great.
yes, yes, I did. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Because there is nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. There's nobody greater than you. Can we say, I've searched all over. I've searched all over. I still couldn't find nobody. No 
Anybody tired of giving God praise? Can I see the hands go up one more time? Not to me, but, but, but to the Lord right now and give him a wave. Just give him a wave and give him a praise. Just, just open up your mouths now and, and just tell him something wonderful. Oh, even the fact that he made something wonderful out of you and me. Oh, the fruit of our lips is what he deserves. Hallelujah. We give him the highest praise. We, we give him the best praise. We give him all that is due. If, if, if you don't even know how to praise, just, just trust the Holy Spirit. For he leads us into praise, into saying the right words. Oh, he leads us even where we can't find words. Oh, the Holy Spirit offers intercession for us with, with words that cannot be uttered through groanings. Sometimes you can't find the words, but deep down on the inside, you feel that gratitude. You know that God has been good. You know that God has done so much for you. Oh, give him the praise, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've been blessed to be able to express ourselves in song with, with the instruments with music with our hands with our feet with with our body language we can dance we can move about yes we can rock our heads yes we can do it because God is worthy we're doing it to the glory and the honor of the king of kings and the lord of lords come on somebody give the lord the fruit of your lips give the lord your praise give the lord your best give him your all no one deserves it more nobody greater than he is he is the greatest of all the creator the ruler the maker of all he is elohim he is el shaddai he is el elion he is the lord of lords he is adonai he is jehovah he is the name above all names in the old testament he is yahweh in the new testament he is the son of the living god his name is jesus yeshua he is known to by some jesus by most and we exalt him to the highest place we give him the glory we give him the honor we exalt him to the highest place the highest rock pedestal we exalt his name we big you up Jesus we big you up Lord hallelujah hallelujah anybody grateful today anybody remember where you're coming from anybody remember what the Lord has brought you through oh glory to God there will be no amnesia today there will be no forgetfulness today God you have been so good God I owe you my life so I give it to you Lord in total surrender for what you have done for me words can't fully express how grateful I am hallelujah hallelujah yes Lord it was you who brought us across the mighty Red Sea it was you who took us across the Jordan it was you Lord who as we encountered every battle as we encountered every foe it was you Lord who said stand still and see the deliverance of the Lord it was you who comforted our hearts reminding us that the battle is not ours but it belongs to you it was you God fighting for us and saying all you gotta do is praise me it was you Lord 
fighting. Lord, it was you, God, winning. It was you, God, delivering. It was you, God, carrying us through when no one else was there, when all hope was gone. It was you when we were sinking, when we were dying. It was you who spoke, you shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. We are here today because of you, Lord. Because of you, Lord. Therefore, the object of our praise will never elude us. Because it's you, Lord. It's you. It's you, Lord. When the enemy wore flesh, it was you, Lord. When the adversary came in like a flood, it was you, God, that lifted that standard for your people. When we were going through the fire, it was you, Lord, that prevented us from being burned. When we were going through the flood waters, it was you, God, that kept us from drowning. Lord, when we seem as if we were going under, it was you that stepped forth, reached down your hand, oh, and rescued us, God. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. See, I searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. I am low. Still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. It was you, Lord. It was you, Lord. I am not. I am not uncertain. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that it was God. And guess what, church? He who started a good work in you, he will bring it to completion. He's going to bring it to fruition. Don't give up. Irrespective of what appears to be circumstances beyond that which we expected but don't be deceived don't be confused your God is gonna bring all things to fruition he's gonna bring you out he's gonna put you on top just don't give up hallelujah hallelujah It's you, Lord. We searched on Hallelujah. Over, couldn't find nobody. Hallelujah. All over, couldn't find nobody like you. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Searched all over. Searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. I looked high and God bless you. You may be seated. Those who are standing, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you today, my brothers and sisters. Nehemiah reminds us that our praise is eternal. Glory to God. And where we are headed, guess what they're doing there? They're praising God day and night meaning all the time that that's what the, the the angels and the the saints of all ages that's that's all they do they praise god all the time and if you are indeed heading there where they are then we have to get our praise on from now those who can't praise god now won't be able to praise him up there so i want to encourage you brothers and sisters whatever losses you have incurred ensure that you never lose your praise 
you, the devil wants to take it away from some of us you know the devil wants to back us in a corner with our mouth shut and with our heads down and with all hope gone from us and all we do is throw our hands up in the air not in praise but in surrender and say boy we give up that's it but don't lose your praise keep your trust right where it needs to be It is the, the 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 virus is is now at a community spread level. We are we are at that stage of transmission. So as as difficult as it is to swallow, we have to just assume, Sister Thompson, that everybody has it. You can't just take for granted that. Well, oh no, well. Pastor look all right, man. He no, he no look like him have no virus at all. So I'm, I'm going to encourage, and I use myself as the example, because really and truly, any one of us could have it. Yes? We, we may know of persons who have tested positive officially, and we may know of persons who, who we think have it because we say they look like they have it. You know, and then there are others that don't look like they have it, and, and we just let down our guards. And then later on we're wondering where we get this thing from but brothers and sisters we trust god and if we follow the measures that have been put in place then i'm not saying that you will never be able to catch it or it will never come near you but i'm saying it is less likely so what we're doing is minimizing the risks so we we need to be wearing our masks when we cannot physically distance ourselves from others and we need to practice proper good hand sanitizing and hand washing methods right i'm telling you the truth from my bond is the first i ever wash my hands so often it, it, it reached the point where sometimes i look at my fingers and you know when you're in the water for too long you know and it start get withered looking you know that, that's how it looks sometimes I need to get some nice hand lotion and put on it and you, you know the ones the ones like where you use sister nadine you know the fancy ones there you know <laughs> praise the lord but uh let us let us play our part uh come tomorrow we are anticipating new measures we we have been warned and uh we cannot blame the government or the health officials uh we need to blame ourselves you know as a people we have we have not been paying careful attention and we've not been doing our best we have been wasteful we have we have been been um indisciplined you know and you you watch the television and you see how people were behaving especially as, as we enter the silly season you know a, a couple of weeks ago the election period people just threw caution to the wind and everybody was just gallivanting and doing their thing and now everybody sitting down waiting i wonder if me test positive right uh, i heard a news report which says that some political people said that they don't need to wear any mask or practice any of the measures because they prayed to god before they went on the motorcade and the lord said that he would protect them i, I mean they could be right i don't know you know we're we're people of faith i can't say to them that is false i don't know what god said to them right but you know several persons have not been as cautious cautious as they should have been and hence we are at the stage where measures will have to be tightened already we are told that you know there's going to be um 
uh, stay at home measures they are dropping the age limit again uh, from 75 to 70 so those who are 70 and above will need to stay home right and uh, they are reviewing the measures as it relates to public gathering i'm praying and hoping that uh, what we have here on a sunday and also what they have on a saturday for services in terms of the the per square meter that we are given or, or or we have that that allowance i'm hoping that they don't trouble that but if they do we can't blame them right the curfew hours as well are going to be narrowed down or rather gonna be expanded from from 7 p.m to 5 a.m and so we have to look forward to to these measures uh, they should start tomorrow so i'm certain that uh, between today and tomorrow in the day we're going to be hearing some more but brothers and sisters let's not wait on the officials the government officials and our leaders for the measures to come out there are things that we can practice physical distancing wearing our masks hand washing and sanitizing you know we can do those things not just here at church but even when we're at home you know let us be conscious to that extent and let us do our best to not only protect ourselves but to protect others sometimes we want to uh, take for granted that our faith is enough to cover everybody your faith might be stronger than somebody else's so while you might not get it because your faith is super strong somebody else who is not as strong might just get it so let us play our part and look out for one another today before the word i want to pray for uh, some issues and some persons i want to greet all those who are viewing today via facebook <clears throat> and youtube i want to thank you very much for your 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 viewership and for joining us once more here at the sandy bay new testament church of god so hear what's happening today is the first sunday of the new church year and we have a new administrative bishop reverend dr roy notice we have some new faces going into the national office we have some pastors new pastors that would have taken up their appointments today it would be their first sundays so i'm talking about uh, recent uh, graduates of bethel Bible college and um persons who have been who have applied and and have been been placed credentialed and and placed at a church they start today not to mention transfers so not persons new to ministry now but persons who were pastoring one place last week sunday and this sunday they are elsewhere right a number of that a number of those transfers uh went on some you may know about and others you may not our duty our responsibility is to pray for the ministry that the lord will have his way and we're going to do that today also we have a new government well really it is not a new government but it's the return of the old one and that was emphatic right i don't care which side of the divide you fall on it is very clear that the Jamaican people have spoken and whether you are JLP or Labourite or not, this government becomes the government of the people and Andrew Holness becomes the Prime Minister of all and sundry. So I don't want anybody down there or out there saying, well, I'm not for me Prime Minister. They don't know who are for your Prime Minister. Portia. <laughs> we have to be united here you know the politics you know we need to put that aspect behind us and as a church we need to get back to what we are called to do primarily which is to offer prayers for our leaders can i remind the church that no leader can be elevated except god allows for him or her to go there 
And when I talk about leader, not just political and, and, and secular, but even in the church, religious, we find that it is God who elevates one and it is God who takes down another. So it is our duty to pray that the Lord will have his way. It's an awesome mandate, right? It is, it is not one that I can say I envy this young man for, right? He has his work cut out for him. But what I can promise him is that as a church, we will continue to pray for our leaders. We have some members that are not doing well. Um, there was their sister Passel is not doing well. Um, sister Sandy is not doing well. I saw a prayer request uh, via Facebook from Sister McIntyre, from Sister Nicolette McIntyre who is asking for special prayers for herself and family, especially an aunt of hers. We want to remember her and her family. Also, we have, we have a, um, a number of persons who are not doing particularly well today. And we just want to pray for the sick. We want to pray for those who have lost loved ones and just to reassure that God has not forgotten us. He, he never has and never will. He will never forget us, but he will always come to our rescue. Praise the Lord. If, if you have clothes on the line and there's nobody at home to take them up, them go wet up, right? If, if you left a window open and there's nobody at home to close it, the bed might just get wet but we, what else can we do <laughs> praise god praise god so we want to pray in in that regard today and i beg you to join me as we pray for our leaders church and government and as we pray for those who are not well sister pat uh sister pam rather from hope well I, I i heard that that is from up lookout i heard that she was uh, she had an accident last night was hit by a motor vehicle um, but is at home we want to remember sister pam in our prayers so can i beg your indulgence just bow your heads with me right where you are you can pray i know you can and i know you have a heart of compassion a heart that reaches out to others so i'm going to ask you to bow your heads and join me as we pray for these issues and more can be added as well father we come to you recognizing you as the god of our salvation king of kings and lord of lords we know you hear us when we call on you Lord, we know and for we have experienced that you come to our rescue when we call. Lord, there are issues before us today that we know you are more than able to deal with them. There is nothing that we can tell you that will surprise you. There is nothing that befalls us that will put you into a state of confusion. Lord God, you are the sovereign one. You are the, the omnipotent and immutable God, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And because you have did it before, we know you can do it again. Lord, we have new leadership for the New Testament Church of God. Bishop Dr. Roy Notice is your choice, Lord, for leading this denomination at this time. There are other national leaders that have been installed. Lord God, leaders that have, oh Lord, surrendered to you and have indicated their willingness, oh, to commit themselves to the task in these trying and unprecedented times. We pray that you will not fail them. We pray that you will not leave them, Lord, nor forsake them. But that God, as they look to you, you will grant them your wisdom. You would grant them understanding. And God, you would show them the path 
that they need to lead this blessed church of God on for this season. Lord God, may your blessings be upon them and their families. Oh, we pray today. Lord, we pray for our national leaders, Lord, in government. Lord Andrew Holness, Lord God Almighty and his team, Lord even now we pray that you would guide him in selecting the right persons for leadership, oh God Almighty, for holding various portfolios, God significant God to this country, our growth and our development. We pray God that you would lead him by the power of the Holy Spirit as you have elevated him one more time to leadership in this country that God you would grant him the wisdom and the wherewithal to function in accordance with your will and purpose for this country Lord even the opposition Lord we pray that you'll remember the people's national party as well as they have a role to play under her majesty this loyal opposition I pray God that both will come together and that the right decisions will be made God almighty that corruption will be allowed to play no part in the governance of this country but that God morality oh, will be the order of the day that Lord as the church continues to pray and to play her part that government and leaders oh God will consider the people that would have elected them and God will serve accordingly to the glory and honor of your name and it will redound to the benefit of the people of this country Lord remember those who are sick remember the shut-ins Lord God remember those who are struggling physically oh God names were mentioned earlier earlier names Lord may have been omitted but we are thankful God that you know everyone who is struggling this morning every sickness every disease every illness we place before you in the name of Jesus Christ the healer of our bodies and our souls and we declare today that healing is our bread and we will eat oh God until we are filled oh Lord and we will give you thanks and we will give you praise recognizing you as the healer of our bodies and the healer of our souls Lord God hear us today and that which we fail to ask Lord we pray that you fail not to grant it unto us. Lord, we trust you wholeheartedly. And we pray, God, that your spirit will move among us, O oh God. And, and even, Lord, among those who are watching via Facebook and, and YouTube, we pray that your spirit will touch them and that they too will be blessed. Oh God, as they partake, oh Lord, of your word, oh God, and fellowship and worship today. We honor you and we give you the praise and tell you thanks in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much for your indulgence. Uh, to my right, uh, your left, we have two boxes over there that are placed they contain two uh, high velocity 20 inch standing fans praise God and yes uh, we're gonna get them set up uh, we couldn't set them up today but certainly we'll have them assembled by next week Sunday so that we can have them pouring some more of the natural air so that we can stay cool boy rain are far but the time's still hot yes and so we're thankful to God 
for these two standing fans. Uh, they're, they're the donation, donation from the Grahams, brother and sister Graham. They sit in the front right here. And we truly want to, yes, we truly want to express our appreciation to you, sir, ma'am, for the timely contribution. I want you, brothers and sisters, to, to embrace the Grahams. You know, they, I'm sure you would have noticed that they have been worshipping with us for some time. You know, their, their hearts have been transferred to here. <laughs> And we want to recognize their, their contributions and, and also that which they have to offer. Their son is already a part of our music uh, setup. Matthew, you know, he plays the drums and he plays the drums well. You know, brother, brother Graham himself, he brings some skills, uh, skill sets uh, to our church at this time especially at a time when we're working on the physical building you know and and he has already expressed his heart to me and his willingness to work with us there is a man that i want you to mark his face and for him to mark your face brother graham brother daly is that brother daly just put your head through the door so brother graham can see you that's right that's right brother daly is coordinating the work on the building and brother daly Brother Graham, I feel that you can have a talk with him. He has some things that he can contribute to the development of this church. I, I, <laughs> I, I don't know the specific skill sets that Sister Graham brings, but I, I'm certain that in time, we're, we're gonna see it, we're gonna see it. You know, for, for now, she is a teacher by profession. So she has some indelible contributions that she can make uh, as a result of her own skill sets. Praise the Lord. So we thank God for his blessings. And I just want to encourage you, brothers and sisters, to let us keep on doing all that we can because a time is coming when we will not be able to do anything. So while it is daytime, let us work for the night comes when no man can work. Don't say to yourself, I will wait until next year to offer more. While you have the opportunity, let us give God the best that we can give him because we don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. Praise the Lord. So God, again, God bless you, Brother Graham, Sister Graham. God bless you to the Graham's family. Praise God, we're delighted to have you. All right, let's go to the word see what we can uh, glean from it today let me invite you to turn your Bibles with me to Psalm chapter 1 Psalm chapter 1 and we're going to this is one of those psalms that people can basically quote it by heart because you know it that way so i'm just going to read verse verses two and three because we we know the psalm so well psalm chapter one I'm sure everybody's there by now if not, you might have to go to the table of contents. But don't worry, I'm sure Psalm is there. It is there. Verse 2, it says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. And that was a reading from the New King James Version. We say amen to the word of God. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I want to share with you today 
for the next few minutes on the topic the blessed man and the blessed word the blessed man and the blessed word and I want nobody to take offense uh, man here is generic so when we talk about the Bible talks about the blessed man it's really talking about the blessed individual right my topic just wouldn't sound smooth to say the blessed individual and the blessed world uh, so see, see, I, I'm like that I, I sit down and I say how will it ring how, how will it how will it uh, connect with the people so in my heart the blessed man and the blessed word sounded as if it had more flow so work with it praise the Lord the key to understanding this psalm is presented in verse 6 it says for the Lord knows the way of the righteous but the way of the ungodly shall perish in this psalm the way of the righteous and the way of the ungodly are contrasted there is a distinctive difference in the characteristic and integrity of both in the reverse order we see very clearly the character of the ungodly and his or her ultimate demise towards the end of the psalm it says for the Lord knows the way of the righteous but the way of the ungodly shall what shall perish so we know the ultimate end of the ungodly with the righteous however we notice a description of a character who knows exactly how to live and respond what to do and what not to do this character is referred to as blessed in the text now the word blessed carries the idea of happiness and contentment further it's a word that comes from a root word meaning to be straight or to be right so when the bible says blessed is the man it therefore speaks to the happiness the blessedness the contentment in the life of the man or woman who is right or straight with God we want more people to be right and straight with God note that the Bible didn't say the king that is blessed it didn't say, talk about the blessed scholar it doesn't speak about the blessed who is rich it speaks about the blessed man this blessedness is as attainable by the poor the forgotten and the obscure as by those whose names figure in history and are trumpeted by fame it doesn't matter who you are it is how you choose to live your life and who you choose to honor that determines your blessed state you're not blessed because you are rich but you would be rich because you are blessed you are not blessed because of your position or status in life but it would be because you are blessed that offers you such position and status the blessed man brothers and sisters does not do certain things so the bible the text the passage the chapter tells us that the blessed man walks not the blessed man does not stand in certain positions does not sit in certain positions in other words there is a way he will not walk there is a path he will not stand in 
and a seat that he will not sit in. It speaks to the way we think, the way we believe, and to whom we belong. The difference, brothers and sisters, between the righteous and the ungodly seem to be how we think, how we behave, and to whom we belong. These are distinctions that we must make note of. And we must be careful to apply them to our lives if we want to be distinguished as blessed opposed to those who are unrighteous. But then there is another major distinction between the righteous and the unrighteous. The blessed and the not so blessed. And we see it in the core of our text, starting in verse 2. This major distinction is seen by the reading, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Somebody praise the Lord with me. His delight is in the law of the Lord. The man is blessed not because he refuses to stand certain places or sit in certain seats or walk in certain paths, but because this man delights in the word of the Lord. You see, that is the source of our blessing. That is the key to finding the blessings of God. Many people think that it is about avoiding certain things and we end up putting traditions and rituals ahead of the word of God and we get the equation wrong. Therefore, we cannot end up in the right place. We have to get the equation right. It is the word of God that allows one to be blessed. So, as we explore the blessed man and the blessed word today, firstly, brothers and sisters, I want us to note as we look at the distinctions that the blessed man embraces the blessed word. The blessed man embraces the blessed word. Throughout the Psalms, the phrase, law of the Lord, is used to describe the entirety of God's word. Not just portions of the law found in the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, but also the prophets, the poetical writings, the historical books, and by extension, the New Testament writings, the gospel, and the epistles. Yes, the blessed man delights himself in the word of God. What is it that makes you happy? What is it that makes you excited? This becomes critical in establishing what is important. If personal pleasure is that, is that which makes you happy, then it's a strong possibility you will become selfish and self-centered as an individual. If it's personal pleasure, the blessed man finds his delight in the word of God. And when you delight yourself in God's word, then the psalmist tells us that he will grant you the desires of your heart. But the problem is that our desires are not in keeping with God's word. When your desire is material possession then only when you have that you're going to be happy uh, it doesn't matter how much we in the spirit it doesn't matter how solid a word is being preached it doesn't matter how intense our prayers are there are some among us who will never be happy because it's material possessions you want and that is sad it is sad because we are told to delight ourselves in God. And God will grant us what we need. 
We are told to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then all the material things that you need will be added unto you. Brothers and sisters, when a person delights in something or someone, you, you know you don't have to beg for that person's affection or attention. No. You, you see, when someone loves church, you can do it. You know? You, no, nobody have to force them to come. You, you can know when someone is into the music because you don't have to beg them. They know exactly their position. Just look at them. They're over there. <laughs> you don't have to beg them because they have a passion. They have a desire for it. But when you do not have that passion or that desire, man, it's an uphill task. You have to be begging people, do, please. May I beg you, come now. We need the help. Then pastor, why are you begging him so much? No, him are the leader. Oh boy, but boy, he need a little extra encouragement. <laughs> You know, sometimes, brothers and sisters, if when we find ourselves struggling to, to create initiative and to, to, to find purpose in what we're doing, maybe we need to check our delight, our passion, our attitude towards whatever it is that we are tending to. You can measure your delight for God's word by how much you hunger for it. If you find yourself struggling so much, boy, I can't bother with reading the Bible. It might be a sign that you don't have a hunger for it. But I hear Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5 saying, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. If you are looking for God, if you are hungry for God, then you will want to go into his word. If you consider yourself to be blessed, then you must embrace the blessings of God's word. I don't know people going around singing I am blessed, but you're not reading God's word. That's why when the material things run out, you don't sing no more. Because it is not God's word that you delight in. It's material things. The blessed man embraces the blessed word. Secondly, the blessed man meditates on the blessed word. The blessed man meditates on the blessed word. The blessed man ponders the word of God. He does not just hear it and forget it, but he thinks about it. What does it mean? What is it saying to me? How can I put it into practice? When you read God's word, you, you, must, you must find yourself asking these critical questions of the word of God. Because that is a sign that you are meditating on the word. In Eastern meditation, the goal is to empty the mind. Now this is dangerous and I'm not encouraging anybody to empty your mind. Because an empty mind may present an open invitation to deception or demonic spirits. Yeah, those who want to practice transcendental meditation and yoga, and you might find yourself feeling some ways that you never felt before. Could be a sign that something that you didn't want to get in there got in there. And a trouble no for get you out, Lord Jesus. And for your pastor and a dopey conqueror. <laughs> so, you, you guys might have to go to one of the dopey conqueror ones them. My advice to you is to stay far from the things that will not benefit you spiritually. There are some things that you just must look past. It's not everything that we see on TV and on the internet that we must jump to embrace. The blessed man meditates on the blessed word of God. 
the Christian meditation the goal of Christian meditation is to fill your mind with the word of God not to empty your mind but to fill it with the word of God as in Paul as Paul writes in Philippians 4 and verse 8 whatever things are true whatever things are noble whatever things are just whatever things are pure whatever things are lovely whatever things are of good report if there is any virtue and if there is any praised worthiness in them meditate on these things you need to read the word of God some more and spend time meditating on God's word. Many lack because they only read and do not meditate. It is not only reading that does us good, but the soul inwardly feeding on it and digesting on it says Charles Persian hey like Jeremiah we need to eat God's word and allow it to digest the prophet says it is sweeter than honey from the honeycomb we need to feed and feast on the word of God so that we can digest more of it we, we spend our time sometimes just browsing browsing through the word we spend our time just thank God for whatsapp because if that brother or sister didn't send you that scripture per day I don't know how some would have managed and even so sometimes you don't even read all that is sent because we are so preoccupied we, we can't find the time we're just too busy because I have a lot of Facebook requests to tend to and I have a lot of pictures to look at and to love or like and so we don't get the time to spend meditating on God's word brothers and sisters the blessed man finds that time as a matter of fact the Bible tells us how much time the blessed man is willing to give to the blessed word of God only two occasions you need the psalmist says day and night and sister Bartley that should cover it day and night now if we could spend more of our time meditating on God's word we would get in less trouble you just let that one soak from whoever whoever has an ear let to hear let him hear it, it's for you yes if you spend more time meditating on God's word you find that you get in less trouble yes the blessed man embraces the blessed word the blessed man meditates on the blessed word and thirdly the blessed man is blessed by the blessed word the blessed man is blessed by the blessed word from verse 3 or in verse 3 we see this coming out the psalmist the writer uses an illustrative simile that doesn't mean that you are a tree they say you shall be like a tree uh, but I try grow no branch don't bother go outside go stand up hey, my sister Campbell don't stand up outside make it rain wet you up so you can grow like a tree but a tree by a river has a continual source of water that's the best place to plant a tree if you want fruit to come you have to ensure that you plant your fruit tree in the right place not true i'm not i'm not a farmer i can't recall planting anything but there are some things brother daily that just seem natural that if you are going to plant certain items if you want them to flourish then you must ensure that they are they are planted at a spot where there is a continual source of water yes there are some things that don't need much water 
still can understand how watermelon will spoil if it gets too much water but then pumpkin will spoil if it don't get a lot of water so one man will see the rains falling and say thank you God make it fall while another man is there saying please God make it stop fall because the melon them can go to waste you just have to know how to plant where to plant the psalmist says that the blessed man is like a tree that is planted by the river rivers of water a continual source of nourishment exists it will never wither away because it is always getting what it needs if we are constantly lacking brothers and sisters it may be worth examining where we are planted for some of we plant wrong if you, come on now. if you are constantly lacking hey brother taylor i think you need to check where you're planted because something might be wrong with the soil something might be wrong with the water source or channel the water that should be reaching your root not reaching it huh we must examine whether we are by the rivers of water or we are somewhere else many christians are somewhere else wondering lord why am i not growing you plant in the wrong place i know but come to me the fools you say people plant you <laughs> You know we stay already, you know. Eh? Anytime anything going bad, as I somebody plant me so. <laughs> if you think that you are planted in the wrong place, all you got to do is relocate. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that this tree would be a strong and stable tree, sinking down deep roots. The life of the blessed man is marked by strength and stability. Why? Because you're planted in the right place. You are feasting on God's word. And the word brings such a blessing to your soul. It's the perfect word. And therefore what you get is the perfect nourishment. You become strong. You become stable. Your roots sink deep. You don't curse God. You're not complaining. You're not murmuring. But instead, you exhibit that strength, that marks strength and stability because you know you are planted in the right place. The blessed man, brothers and sisters, also bears fruit. The blessed man who is blessed by the blessed word bears fruit even the fruit of the spirit galatians 5 verse 22 and 23 gives us the list of character traits and qualities spiritual qualities that everyone who is blessed by the blessed word of god must exhibit you must bear fruit the fruit comes naturally from the tree because the tree is planted by the rivers of water it is abiding in a life source and i hear jesus in john 15 and verse 5 saying he who abides in me and i in him bears much fruit hallelujah for without me you can do nothing but when you abide in christ then you begin to experience the blessedness of fruit bearing not just any ordinary fruit not just any time but the bible says you will bear fruit in your season glory to god i wonder if you know what this means some of us interpret fruit bearing to mean that boy all year round everything just flourishing i know so it go brother tyrone sometimes no fruit now out there but you know who you are you, you're not going grudge somebody else hello because sometimes we 
we end up looking at other people, you know. Sister Chambers is your season. And when it's your season, it's your season. Yes. Enjoy your season. Bear your fruit. Let the world see that the fruit is bearing and it's good fruit too. Hallelujah. My responsibility is to pray for Sister Chambers. Yes, because I can pray trust in God knowing that her season is now. My season is coming because I am connected to the same source. I am connected and planted at the same rivers of waters. I am connected to the source. I abide in Christ. Therefore, I know that my time, my season is coming. Brothers and sisters, your your season is coming as long as you're planted in the right place there's no need to envy anybody there's no need to be jealous no need to compare yourself with others just know that your blessing coming when it's time for your fruit to bear sister Marcia oh you can't hide good fruit no, so as a matter of fact, people going to start throw a stone by a tree. Why? Because they see something fruitful on it. Yes, that is what happens when people recognize that your fruit season is now. They begin to envy you. But brothers and sisters, don't get caught in that trap. Just wait for your season. And when your fruit come, embrace the fruit that you're bearing embrace it bears fruit in its season the blessed man enjoys not just fruit bearing but he enjoys prosperity in that his leaves are always green is the bible said <laughs> What does Jack says the Bible said? The Bible says that your fruit, your tree, the leaves shall never wither. No, sir. Not brown and withered, which are signs of death and dryness. The Bible says that you, your fruit tree shall never wither. You shall prosper. No, I'm not talking about a a Midas touch that the blessed man relies on. I'm not talking about good fortune. As I said, boy, you're lucky. No, that, that's not what we're talking about here. We're, we're not talking about coincidence. We're, we're not talking about crossing your finger and put it behind you. No, sir, we're, we're not talking about any measure of luck. No. We are talking about the God who brings forth something good and wonderful out of everything that he does. We are talking, Sister Nadine, even tough circumstances bring forth something that shall prosper for the blessed man. In other words, because you are planted in the right place, because you are bringing forth fruit in its season, because your leaves are not brown and withered you're not dead you're not dry everything that you put your hand to is blessed everyone that comes in contact in your vicinity is blessed they can't deny it they can't stop it because it is God that is working in your season you have dedicated yourselves to him and to his word you are meditating on it you are embracing it therefore the blessings that come from the blessed word every promise that is in there you can say it's mine let not your heart be troubled brothers and sisters activities and things that are happening around us might appear to be to the contrary 
but let not your heart be troubled sister Annie even the things that don't appear to be going right for you God can turn it around turn it into good but the apostle Paul says that God worketh all things together for good to those who love him those who are called in accordance with his divine will and purpose you see when you are blessed when you are spending time in the book of promises the blessed word you know that even the bad things God turned them into good you know that even if they sell you into slavery you know that even if you're locked up in prison you know that even when they falsely accuse you you know that when they point fingers when they criticize you even when they tear you down God is working it out so that your rebirth your redevelopment will be greater brother Taylor than in former years you said it that when God gets ready to restore unto you he's gonna give you double he's gonna triple it he's gonna quadruple it because he's a God who never fails see we serve a God that knows more about prosperity than the JLP we, we, we know it so if anybody down there looking to Andrew for prosperity Tande, wait it's coming you know sir we acknowledge government and leadership but it is the God of our salvation that brings real prosperity hallelujah even when the things don't seem to be going right we know that he's working it out everything that you put your hand to you're gonna find the success ultimately because you are prosperous anything at all believer who trusts God delights himself herself in his word I'm telling you the truth sister uni it, it could be that you make some mix up some kool-aid and, and lime and water and sugar and make some bad juice and that's how you start and later on you you, you get a contract with we single that's the God that we serve yes it don't matter what you're doing once you are putting God in there you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring it forth fruit in its season your leaves shall not wither and whatever you do shall prosper anything at all try it anything at all glory to God sister Nads you decided you're gonna try your best to get some subjects you're going to work at the academic achievements you start off small God says I have more than a degree in store for you there is work there is meaningful activities gainful employment personal business venture in it why because you are that tree you see when when when, when you're like that tree it, it doesn't matter how much people have them out on you it doesn't matter what they have to say it don't even matter what they think you're not asking for their opinion they are free to give it but it's not as if you're you're gonna write home about it you're not depending on their opinion to put food in your pot no sir you are trusting God anything that you do it don't matter how simple because you are like that tree everything that you put your hand to shall prosper anybody want the prosperity anybody want that prosperity then you got to become planted oh yes you have to be blessed hallelujah by the blessed word of God every promise of blessing and prosperity is in the word of God so we will stand on his word we will embrace it 
we will meditate on it and we will experience the blessings of it hallelujah the lord knows the way of the righteous indeed he does he does the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment no sir sinners can never ever ultimately occupy the congregation of the righteous no sir the lord knows the way of the righteous hallelujah that's what i'm banking on ultimately the way of the ungodly shall perish but the lord knows the way of the righteous i want to encourage somebody today to keep on walking in that path there are persons who are telling you to come off there are persons who are laughing at you saying that boy you look here talk about trust god money can't make out there you have to know if you hustle don't, don't listen to them the lord knows the way of the righteous and i'm banking on that for the way of the ungodly shall perish keep on walking in the way of righteousness be that blessed individual that blessed man who will embrace the word who will meditate on god's word and who will be blessed by the blessed word of god stand with me everybody praise the lord glory to god praise the lord Can anybody declare today that you're blessed? Yes. yes. Anybody can declare today that I, I'm blessed? Where, where, where are all those persons who are like that tree? You like that tree. Huh? You know that everything you touch shall prosper. Hallelujah. Then don't be afraid to put your hands on your children and bless them. You know what I'm saying? Don't be afraid to lay your hand on the business plan and bless it. Don't be afraid to call some names before the Lord and bless them because you know you're planted in the right place. Glory to God. Hallelujah. How many can declare today, I am blessed? <laughs> Hallelujah. For when I wake up in the morning, and I lay my head to rest I am blessed I am blessed Come on, sing it and declare it I am blessed I am blessed Every day of my life I am blessed Oh, when I wake up the morning and I lay my head to rest I am blessed I am blessed oh I am blessed, blessed, blessed. I am blessed every day of my life I am blessed oh when I wake up in the morning Up in the morning, and I lay my 
hallelujah hallelujah just point your hands at somebody you know any number of persons and just just bless them just bless them i bless you come on just bless one another glory to god sister donna take the blessings of god hallelujah take the blessings take the blessings hallelujah don't don't bless yourself now because somebody else is blessing you hallelujah hallelujah those at home i bless you right now watching on facebook and youtube i bless you hallelujah in your going out and coming in when you rise up and when you lie down i bless your endeavors i bless your business i bless your plans i bless your dreams i bless your job i bless your promotion i bless you today hallelujah I declare over your lives the word of God you shall be like that tree planted by the rivers of water that bring it forth its fruit in its season your leaves also shall not wither and everything you do you shall prosper in the name of Jesus you are blessed in everything that you do in all your endeavors in all your efforts in your interactions in your relationships i bless your marriage i bless your children hallelujah i bless every effort at building a relationship i bless you to find the right partner i bless you to find true love i bless you i bless you i bless you in school i bless you in your education i bless you academically i bless you in the spirit i bless you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet on the inside every organ every ligament every joint every nerve every organ everything inside of you i bless in the name of jesus i bless your reproductive system i bless you for you shall bear children i bless you in the right institution i bless your effort the lord bless you the lord keep you the lord make his face shine upon you the lord be gracious unto you and give you peace hallelujah Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah.
upon you and a thousand generations and your family and their children and their children and their children and their children they favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children the blessings of be upon you and a thousand generations family and your children and their children and their children may present go before you and behind you and around you all around you and within you is with you is with you has been sung and pronounced and embraced it is ours brothers and sisters have a pleasant and productive week go with the blessings of the Lord all the members of the pastors council please see me um, in the treasurer's office immediately after all the members of the pastors council We come and when we go, we 
the demons seized For the devil is defeated We are blessed Yeah. 